It has happened. Amendment 2 of BS7671, the wiring regulations, otherwise known as the Big Brown Book, is finally here. And we're all wondering how it's going to affect our life as electricians and business owners. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the main changes, what they might actually mean for us as installers. Will they change the way we work? Will we have to start doing things differently? Grab a cup of tea, like, subscribe, and let's talk. So the first thing I wondered when this new amendment was launched is, when will it take effect? And the basic answer is it takes effect immediately. However, there is a small grace period for transition as the first amendment won't be completely withdrawn until the 27th of September, 2022. So we have a few months where we can still choose to design installations to the first amendment, or at least to finish off installs when they've been designed to the first amendment. This means that we're gonna to have to be careful with our certificates when noting which version of BS7671 they've been designed to. From now on, we at Artisan Electrics will be quoting all new jobs to be designed to meet the requirements of the Second Amendment. But that's a choice that everyone has to make as to when they start to implement these changes. If you continue to work to the previous version until 27th of September, it will be important to agree this with the person ordering the work. But what actually are the changes? Well, there are a lot of boring little changes to the actual jargon in the book, but in this video we're not going to go through any of that. We're going to focus on the changes that will actually have an impact on the daily lives of us electricians. And the first one that really jumps out to me is the use of SPDs or surge protection devices. In the past, some electricians have avoided fitting SPDs, claiming that they won't win board changes if they have to add the price of an SPD into the mix. They got away with this because the installation of an SPD was only recommended, but now the regs make clear that for all installations an SPD is required unless you get the owner of the installation to provide a written document stating that they will not need an SPD due to the loss or damage being tolerable or that they accept the risk of damage and any loss that might happen. Well, in reality, we're never gonna get customers to do this, so it's time to go all in on SPDs. Fortunately, at Artisan, we've been fitting SPDs as standard for a couple of years now. Thus far, we're yet to receive a single complaint from a customer about the additional cost. What about AFDDs? We were all scared that they were gonna become mandatory for everything. Well, the good news is that they are only required in certain specific locations, which are care homes, student accommodation, high-risk residential buildings, and HMOs or houses of multiple occupation. For us, the only one of those that we really do work in is HMO. So we will need to start thinking about AFDDs for those kind of installs now, which is a change, but I think it's for the best. The amount of dodgy wiring I've seen in HMOs over the years, I think these additional safety devices will only help. Also, the days of type AC RCDs are no more. It will be a very rare situation where it's acceptable to install a type AC RCD from now on. So we're gonna be installing type A RCDs as standard for most situations, which most sensible electricians have been doing for a while anyway. A little one to throw in here if you do central heating wiring, we are no longer allowed to sleeve the green yellow wire in a flex and use it as a live conductor. Not that any of us would ever have done that of course. Now a couple of changes that will make our lives easier. The requirement for RCD testing has been changed so that we only need to do the one times test now on the AC setting, no matter what RCD we're testing. So gone are the days of auto test and spending like half an hour testing all the RCBOs in the new box that you fitted across all the various levels of RCD testing. So that's gonna save some time. Another time saver is that the inspection schedule is going to be vastly reduced on electrical installation certificates. So you have way less boxes to tick, which is a nice touch. You still have to check all the same things, of course, but the tick boxes will be more general to cover whole sections of the inspection schedule. The EICR inspection schedule will stay the same though. Also, labeling consumer units is no longer required. The days of those beautiful clean consumer units being ruined by lots of stickers of varying colors and sizes are no more. 
You will still need to provide all that information to the customer in a nice, neat customer pack though. I smell a business idea. Finally, there's good news for anyone who likes to take a bath with the radio on, because from now on we can install a socket 2.5 metres from a bath or shower instead of the 3 metres previously required by the regs. This is to harmonise with our European friends as hair dryers in bathrooms are quite common in most sensible countries, but it seems British people cannot be trusted not to jump in the bath with a hair dryer on full blast. I'm sure there's a Mr Bean sketch somewhere to match that. There's a lot of other bits and pieces in there, such as the new section about prosumers. An interesting little question in there regarding island mode, where you run your house off the storage battery in the event of a power cut. The question is, will the battery storage system produce enough fault current to trip the MCB in the event of a fault on another circuit? I'll leave that with you to discuss in the comments along with any un other interesting points that you'd like to share. So all in all, my personal feeling is that there are no major changes that are gonna make our lives much more difficult. We do need to be aware of the little things that we need to start doing differently, but they're all for the greater good and many of us have already been working in that way for a while anyway. Hope this video is a benefit to you. Don't forget to hit a thumbs up and subscribe if you do enjoy our videos and why not share it out with somebody else who might enjoy it. Now, I know that I've not covered everything in this video. I'm sure there's loads of stuff that I've missed. Let me know everything that you feel about that in the comments. And I'm sure we'll learn more over the days and weeks from various organizations who will help us to see exactly how we can put all these regs into practice in our day-to-day -day lives. And right now, there's gonna be some other great videos from our channel popping up on the screen, so why not grab another cup of tea and watch one of those too? Either way, thanks for watching and bye for now.